Tom, Todd Ulis, SVP of ad.net. We're the marketplace outside of Google and Bing. And as I said, I'm clearly not a woman, but, uh, you know, I have two daughters that I want to empower to, you know, be mo more successful than I am. And I have a wife who's a lot more successful than I am. So, you know, any man should want to have their women stronger and more powerful than them and do everything they can to empower that, that, uh, you know, that, 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 e that e ethos. So, um, let's do quick introductions and, uh, you know, we're actually gonna have a lot of content to go through today. So uh, I mentioned I'm Todd Ulis, SVP of ad.net. We're the marketplace outside of Google and Bing for brands to extend their, their campaigns and get more customers. So, um, Rashi, you want to kind of jump into, you know, your background, your roles, and we can kind of go through, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the content, you know, you kind of put together. Yeah, definitely. It's so nice to be here. And thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a real honor. Um, I, as uh, was sort of mentioned, I have been in the business for, for a long time. I've, I've worked at a variety of different tech companies. Um, currently, I'm at Next Insurance um, as the executive brand director. Um, what I do at Next Insurance is I lead uh, a combination of product marketing, content marketing, social brand, um, as well as research and insights. And I think that what uh, some of the most important things that we do at Next is, is so we are an insurance business. We're, we're actually focusing specifically on small business owners. Owners, um, who haven't been served in the insurance industry in the past. And so we have like a really special niche that, that falls within, um, within that category and within that audience. Um, prior to being at Next Insurance, uh, I was on the Google Consumer Apps team where I was doing a lot of the creative strategy work for, uh, for Google Apps. So that includes Google Search, Google Photos, Google Maps, um, as well as a variety of other Google Lens. Um, and then prior to that, I was at Pinterest. Um, and I started at Pinterest really early, early stage. It was actually, I think, about 17 people when I started in the New York office and about 300 people when I was uh, in the whole corporate. So a lot of different experience, but um, I'm, I'm really excited to be here to talk specifically about being a woman in marketing and also really thinking about how as women we can have we can share perspectives to help drive innovation and um, continue to challenge the status quo within the marketing space yeah i mean you know talk a little bit about you know maybe kind of jumping right in you know you you obviously went from from big brands to uh, to next talk about kind of going from you know a newer brand kind of coming from google and, and then pinterest you know your background and kind of your decision tree and then we can kind of get to you know some of the things you want to obviously advocate and push you know for, for obviously women to kind of help support the group yeah definitely well it's so interesting when i when i first joined um google i I really joined in because of the incredible team and a lot of the innovation that was going on. But what I what I started to realize when I was there is that Google has actually become almost like what we would define as a heritage brand. Um, and there are a lot of uh, a, a lot of there's a lot of uh, attention to detail that goes involved in um, Google marketing. And so being really disciplined about how you can make sure to own your, your particular brand, but then also help drive it forward, help come up with new and interesting and innovative ways that people may perceive you was a big part of the role. And that's very different than at Next. So at Next, we're actually building up that equity. Um, and so there is less uh, history, less, um, less of that heritage angle that we need to focus on. But, but equally important is a real, um, a real, a focus on paying attention to the details. So how do we as a new brand make sure that people understand that with consistency of logo, consistency of colors, um, that we are this one brand that is specifically helping small business, small businesses um, and entrepreneurs, we're helping them thrive. What can we do to build, um, look and feel, to build creative work that helps uh, consumers understand that everything that we're doing is not only bringing a new perspective to the insurance industry, but it's also helping people understand that we are on the side of the little guy and that we are working both in our external advertising and marketing, but also within our company to make things better and to make things um, more delightful for our end consumer, which ends up being that small small business owner. So uh, I think that it was it was a real shift also uh, working within a really large organization um, then to moving into a place where you just have to be a little bit scrappier has been a, a really interesting change for me. But one of the things that I've really appreciated being at Next is uh, that 
as we develop creative campaigns, as we develop marketing, the intention and the focus for our end consumer has always been there. And so what we're doing as we're building that brand equity, it, it becomes a lot easier because we have that really tight focus on the end audience. And so we can tell more of a consistent story, whether it's across our TV channels, across our radio, or we launched our social channels um, in uh, the beginning of Q4 of last year, being really tight about making sure that we're focusing on the right businesses, the right stories, and we're really doing a nice job with making sure that our consumer is the end focus. No, and I'm sure they appreciate that, you know, kind of coming versus, you know, the big company, you know, and kind of have disrupting that, that, that ecosystem. I'm sure they appreciate that you know, for, for what you guys are doing. So, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you, you had pivots in your career and I kind of going from big company, big process to, to, to kind of smaller challenger brands, um, you know, and, you know, I think kind of tying it back to obviously, you know, you being a woman, you being an executive leader in the marketing world. I mean, what were some challenges that you faced, you know, kind of coming in as a woman, um, you know, and ultimately what, you know, I think obviously, and, and anybody has questions, please type them in. You know, I think this, I want to use this as a way to leverage some of your expertise, give some of your advice to kind of support, you know, support women in the community. And I'm videoing this. I'm going to show my two daughters afterwards too. Um, you know, my wife will probably roll her eyes. She works at an insurance company as well. So, uh, so, you know, like what were, what would some of the challenges you face and some of the advice you would give, you know, on how to overcome those challenges, kind of being a woman and being an executive leader in marketing. Yeah, definitely. Well, it, it's really interesting that you asked that. So um, uh, one thing I'll be really transparent about right now is I'm actually currently on maternity leave. So um, I am uh, really, I'm, I'm actually a, a new mom to a second a second child. I have a two and a half year old daughter and my son is now eight weeks old. Um, and so I'm in a really fortunate uh, position to be able to have a great maternity leave from next um, and really appreciative of that. But um, I think one of the things things that I have found. So uh, prior to being at Pinterest and Google, I was on the advertising agency side. I was both at Razorfish um, as well as I was at Gray. Um, I see Desiree said, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, and so I actually really didn't think that much about challenges, specifically being a woman within the marketing space um, until... Um, until maybe I, I, I shifted and, and became a little bit more of a senior leader. Uh, because one of the things that I found is, as a woman early on in my career, um, I was able to have the same opportunities. I was able to have, I was actually lucky enough to have female mentors and great female colleagues um, that sort of paved the way. So I, I didn't really um, see a noticeable change until I started to um, become more senior. And I started to see how as, uh, as you became more senior, there were less and less women within, um, within the marketing and advertising space. And so um, again, I, I do wanna do a, a quick shout out to my current employer next because um, the CMO of next uh, is Melanie Chase. Um, she is formerly VP of marketing at Fitbit and she's a total badass um, and a really great uh, mentor and leader. So uh, love seeing that. Um, and then our, C, uh, our CFO is also a, a wonderful um, leader uh, recently joined from Airbnb. So uh, it's, it's great to have female mentors, but in the absence of female mentors, when you're in a position where you don't have that, I think it's really important to model the behavior that you believe is right. So there's, there's not everyone is lucky enough to have those female leaders within their presence, but that doesn't mean that you need to then change the way you act or change the way you behave. There's a little bit of gut and intuition in terms of um, leadership style. One of the things that I, I felt early on was um, uh, Steve Jobs as a uh, as a leader was always known for being kind of brash and, and having like a very specific disposition. And I always wondered, well, if I lead with empathy as a leader, will people not respect me? Will people not uh, think of my decision as um, authentic and true because I'm not leading with an iron fist, I'm trying to keep an open mind. And what I found as I progressed in my career is that's not the case. People actually really value empathetic leaders and there is a role for that type of person. Um, but I think whatever the leader is, whatever your personality type is, being true to that specific um, element of yourself is the reason you're hired on. Uh, people and companies, they value, uh, they value women in leadership because of the diversity and perspective that they're able to bring. And so I think it's really important to not feel like you need to adjust 
the way you are just to fit in with other male counterparts or um, other people within your executive team. You bring your own unique perspective and that's the most critical part of being, um, being valued as a leader within your particular organization. No, and you know, and you, you definitely said, said a lot. There's, there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, first off, obviously having a mentor or somebody you can kind of respect and, you know, and, and modeling good behavior. You know, I mean, it's, as a parent, you know, my, my two daughters are about the same age difference as yours is. So trust me, it gets a lot easier, um, you know, <laughs> it, it, after you get through the first number of months. But, uh, you know, it's modeling good behavior, you know, and it's modeling the behavior of mentors that you have above you. And you touched upon something that's definitely very, very dear to all of us right now is empathy, right? Leading with empathy. And, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, you know, it's the old school model of management, you know, it's not really that way. And, you know, luckily that's changing, right? You know, and especially with everything we have, it's been going on the last three years and all of our lives, empathy, you know, and looking at more of, you know, servant leadership you know, and how do you help and taking in open eyes, you know, and, and especially nowadays too, it's if, you know, with, with, you know, it, you can't, the aspect of being in an office every day is more about control, you know, versus mm -hmm. open empathy and understanding. And if people are going to want to be successful, you know, they're going to, they're, you know, they're going to be, and, and there's a leader of them, you know, and being able to kind of help them grow as, as leaders and whatnot. So um, we hit upon some amazing points, obviously for, for the group is, empathy, mentors, and modeling behavior. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit more about next because I see the excitement, you know, in your face and obviously what you've, what you've been able to build a little bit. Um, you know, like it, it, you know, in terms of, you know, you work with a lot of business owners, you know, from different, from bakeries to food trucks, you know, how does like, you know, how, how do these customers find you guys? You know, how are you looking to service them? And, you know, ultimately, you know, obviously this is, this is a women in marketing panel, like, you know, kind of having the, the focus on growing women and women related business owners is always, always going to be a positive thing too, you know? Yeah, absolutely, Todd. So uh, I mentioned that we launched our social channels. Um, we relaunched them uh, at, at, in September of last year. And as we were doing, so we actually uh, did a brand refresh for the Next Insurance brand with the Collins Agency. Um, and we really launched all of that work in addition to our social channels um, in September of last year. And it was a really nice brand moment for us because we were able to take all of the ethos and all of the um, kind of culture that we built internally and then flip it outside so that we were able to make it feel a little bit more external. Um, so our, our founder uh, and CEO at Next Guy Goldstein, um, one of his real mission for the company is, is that we help entrepreneurs thrive. And the way Way that um, we have seen that both our CMO Melanie and then also Spencer Hansen, our creative director, and myself, we've all kind of worked together and with the leadership team um, made sure that that ethos, that that mission, is not only part of the way that we market and advertise to external people, but it's also the way we do business internally. And so when we think about that, it, that uh, comes to play in the way that we uh, do business. So all of our swag is bought from small business owners. And so um, we actually did a collaboration with Stuzo, um, uh, Joni, um, Joni is one of the one of the founders of Stuzo, and she uh, she has done a really beautiful job with developing some some great uh, some great collaborations and swag for us, where we're able to actually put our next logo, but then also make sure that all of these products are exactly what we want to be. It tells the story of the small business owner, and then what we do is we put that out on our social channels. So um, Stuzo is a, a, a retail shop um, that has uh, that has a combination of um, uh, of uh, sorry, it has a combination of like sweatpants, sweatshirts, and then a variety of other retail, um, retail apparel. And then we've also done collaborations and um, shout outs with uh, the Syrup Shop, which is uh, a Filipino food truck, um, with Rosalind Bakery, which is a bakery out in San Francisco. And what we do is once we work with them internally, and once we kind of have this collaboration, then what we do is we highlight them on social channels. So we have an Instagram story. So we make sure that other people, all of our following, then can also see what great work and what collaborations we're doing, and then they can support those small businesses. So yes, uh, to your point, we, we have a special focus on women, uh, women small business owners. We're also looking at um, 
uh, Latina and Latino owned businesses and then black owned businesses. And we really are looking to, to essentially take our customers um, who are the heroes of the next story and then highlight them and bring them up. Uh, at the end of the day, Next Insurance is just an insurance company. We're doing some really interesting and innovative things, but we're not the hero of the story. Our small business owners are, and we want to flip the script and make sure that those small businesses are the ones that we highlight across all of our different external channels so that uh, our customers can see that we really care about the customer and, and we really care about people like them. No, and that's awesome. I mean, you know, obviously it, the amplification through social media, you know, helps them. And, you know, it's, it's, it just shows you're, you're moving in above the transactional relationship from being an insurance company to being a truly partner within the growth of these community and growth and kind of finding this community. So it's, you know, when you can obviously do, do good, you know, it's always makes things more beneficial for, you know, for, for the, for the partners you work with, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, talking about, and obviously since this is, you know, tying it back to, you know, being, being a women focused session, you know, like, can you talk about overcoming adversity, you know, and also to, you know, balancing, you know, being a, being a woman and a working mom. And thank you for obviously doing this, you know, being on maternity leave. I know, I know the brand innovators community <laughs> says, thank you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> advice you can give, you know, this is like, it's the age old struggle of balancing, you know, balancing both. You know, I want this to be collaborative and innovative for, you know, uh, you know, to help help the whoever's tuning in, um, you know, just advice that you've you've given seen how you've been able to balance, you know, being an executive as well as, as a working mom. Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of advice that I would give the the feeling when I started my career, um, I. Uh, we'll, we'll be really honest with you. I, I'm an ambitious person. I am um, looking to make an impact and, and really make, uh, really drive some type of, uh, some type of impact on consumers that we, that we work with. So that was the case when I was at Pinterest, where we were trying to get people offline and um, trying to get people to find and discover the creativity within them and connect with the people that they love. The same thing at Google, where we were looking to bring the world the right answers and the right solutions to make their lives a little bit better, a little bit easier. Um, and really, uh, that, that's definitely the case at Next. So, but that being said, it, as as a mom and as a wife, um, what I have found is that careers are not always a ladder and you don't always have to be climbing up to take the next step. Um, one of the great pieces of, of advice that I heard um, is that you should really think about your career more like a jungle gym rather than like a ladder. A jungle gym where you can go horizontally, you can go a little bit diagonally, and sometimes you go down and sometimes that's the right move for you. And so taking one step forward isn't always taking one step up. Oftentimes taking one step forward is just what you need at that moment of your life. So you don't always have to put your foot on the accelerator. Sometimes you can take a moment and breathe a little bit and just keep your foot off on neutral or hit the brakes because that might be what you need as a woman, as a mom in that particular moment. And that doesn't mean that your entire career has shifted trajectory. What it means is you've taken a moment, you've done what's right for you, and you'll always be able to take the next step, whether that next step is diagonal or it's horizontal or it's forward or up. You're always able to do that, but you don't have to feel the pressure to continue to climb. Yeah, I mean, that's great advice. You know, traditionally it's those folks that had their whole lives mapped out when they were 20, 21 in college have been sadly mistaken in their 30s and 40s. And, you know, it's, it's, it's competing with yourself. And to your point, you know, being true to yourself and living, living your truth, um, you know, and ultimately having empathy. I mean, I think, you know, what, you know, besides obviously finding mentors, let's say there's somebody that's 22, 23, you know, wants to get into marketing, you know, what would you, what advice would you give, you know, a woman kind of coming in, um, you know, you had the opportunity, you said, to kind of work in an ad agency and, you know, get great mentors, you know, is there advice you'd say, you know, like for, for, a, for, for a woman kind of coming into the, for the marketing ecosystem? Yeah, definitely. So I, as a younger person, like, I actually think that sometimes finding the right mentors is really difficult to do. Um, it's a time consuming thing. And I know that there's always conversations like you need to find other women to help lift you up. Um, I also think sometimes you are able to lift yourself up by thinking about the work that you do as a collection of experiences. So in the case that you don't have someone who is a mentor or in the case that you don't have another woman around you, um, it, it it's not always 
a, a complete detriment. It's not that you won't be successful. What I would recommend is think about the work that you do and think about how you're collecting a series of experiences and use those experiences to start to nurture and discover what are the things that you love and what are the things that you can apply. So uh, really kind of a little bit of a, a spotlight on my own background, but by no means was a straight trajectory. Um, when I was an undergraduate um, school, I, I studied neuroscience and I just assumed that I would be a doctor because my mom was a doctor and um, I'm a good Indian kid. And that was what I assumed that I would do. And marketing wasn't really within the realm of something that I would ever consider. And so I did neuroscience um, in undergraduate and I decided that I didn't want to go into research, which is like a very common career path for someone who graduates in, in neuroscience. So I did consulting. And after I did consulting, I was like, what am I going to do with this neuroscience background? And then I went into consulting and I was like, I really, I, I, I think it's great to do consulting, but that particular job for me, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to be doing forever. But what I realized is in retrospect, in neuroscience, I was able to take a whole series of pieces of data points and I was able to start connecting those dots of those data points. And that's something that's extraordinarily relevant to my everyday life in marketing. And when I was doing consulting, I realized that I learned how to crunch large Excel databases. And I was like, what am I going to use large Excel databases for if I want to go into marketing and I really want to do creativity? And what I found is when I'm looking at ad effectiveness, I'm able to go in and actually take a look at the numbers myself and then do some um, analysis analysis myself so that I'm able to understand what's going on when I'm looking at how effective a creative campaign is. So um, sometimes you don't know what the experience is, like how that's going to contribute to a change of perspective or your end career goal. But if you think about just collecting different experiences, not again, same thing, not following that direct career path, but really thinking about exposing yourself to different experiences, I think that is the best way for you to um, add value in the future job, the future career, the future team that you're going to be on. At collecting experiences versus stuff. Now, they're at a very similar background. I got two degrees. I was going to be a lawyer, like a good Jewish boy, and uh, uh -huh. picked up my parents that I want to go into business and marketing, like whatever, just graduate in four years. So, you know, the, the, the linear path, and it was, it was challenging the fear of change. You know, I think, you know, as we get older, being more adaptable and accepting of change, um, you know, versus when you're young, you expect this and you look at yourself as somewhat of a failure versus saying it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail, you know, from a, from, from, from a human, human standpoint. So totally, totally empathize. And, you know, I'm sure you're glad you're not a neuroscientist and a doctor and I'm glad I'm not a lawyer right now, you know? High five um, to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, I see, I think, you know, it, kind of helping the community a little bit more. Are there certain resources, communities that you're involved in that's kind of specifically that help women, you know, groups that, you know, you can possibly advise to, and, you know, feel free, anybody that wants to jump in questions for Rashi, probably don't have any questions for me, but more questions for Rashi, um, you know, just type it in and we'll definitely, definitely get them answered. Um, you know, what are, yeah, there's some resources um, you can recommend for women to kind of help build the support community. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, some of my uh, resources and, and community building are a, a little bit non-traditional, but um, I have found Slack to be a, a tremendous place where uh, moms connect with other moms um, and then also some of our classic Facebook groups. So um, one of the things that I uh, work really hard at is, is try and, and make sure that I'm up to date with what those different um, communities are. So I participate in the um, Slack local moms group in Brooklyn, which is where I'm based out of. Um, I'm also uh, part of the Moms in Tech Facebook group, um, which is a, another really, really wonderful resource. Um, but making sure that when you think about these these communities, that you're not just um, that you're not just engaged online, but that you're taking the time to get offline and be able to meet some of these people and be able to um, share some of the resources. Like I'm, I one of my big philosophies um, when it comes to uh, being a woman in marketing is that you have to stay curious. Um, I think it's the the death of us as marketers. If you're not staying curious, you're not hearing and researching what are the consumer trends that are happening within the world. Um, I found this at Pinterest, Google, and at Next is we want to make sure that we're not just staying in the bubble of our own organization because we'll miss what's happening. And so making sure that you're reading, staying curious, but then making those connections in person, talking to people on a day-to-day -day basis, not just on Slack, not just on Facebook, but also 
in the real world. When you go to a restaurant, um, I know it's a little harder now with um, with the new variant and, and making sure that you're doing so in a safe way, but really thinking about how you can connect with people in a one-to-one -one way. I think that that's so important um, and making sure that you're learning about other people and not just talking about yourself, but also staying curious about the world around you. That's that's all really critical. So I, I would definitely recommend um, people find the, the resources that are available within their local community using tools like Slack and Facebook um, groups, but then also taking that extra effort to, to go offline and um, continue to meet people who are not necessarily always like you, but may offer a different perspective. No, uh, and that's, you know, and it, it's, it comes to more intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic, right? You got to push yourself and, you know, even on a management level, working with people that, you know, want to be able to grow themselves and push themselves versus just being kind of content. And those are good investment lessons for our children too, right? Um, exactly. Very true. <laughs> that stay, curiosity found the cat. Um, so can you talk a little bit more, you know, obviously, you know, like kind of with next, some of the things you're looking at for the future, you know, kind of future thinking what, you know, what's, what's next for next in terms of channels, in terms of things that you're excited about, you know, as you, as you kind of push, you know, push the brand out there. Yeah, definitely. Well, we're we're in this really special spot right now at Next, where we have pushed out our brand refresh. Um, our our uh, the way that we the philosophy of the business now is apparent in the way that we're talking to our external um, consumers and and small business owners, and so that's really special. But now what? our opportunity is, is to just continue to amplify, continue to tell our story across all of our different channels. And so you'll continue to see some really interesting work coming through across Facebook and Instagram um, and YouTube. Of course, we're working with influencers. Um, TikTok is a channel that we're starting to explore a little bit more and we're really excited about. I think what we found on TikTok is that, um, is that there's a really passionate a group of small business owners. And I think that speaks to whatever your audience might be, um, that there are pockets of really passionate segments. And it, it goes a little bit to what we saw in early days of, of YouTube, where there are these micro influencers and those micro influencers, it's not always about followers or, or total volume of posts. It's like these, these people that are hyper engaged and hyper interested. Um, and so you can, you can find that on TikTok. Um, we've also seen some interesting pockets um, of, of something like that existing across like like uh, when you think about smaller influencers in Instagram. And so we, we've been working really hard to, to develop what our presence is across that. And then also making sure that we're continuing to beat the drumbeat of making sure that people realize that small businesses are ultimately at the heart of our community and the heart of the way we do business. And so it's so important to support local, to think about your community, um, to think about the coffee shops that you go to on a day-to-day -day basis that just make your community more special um, and how we can continue to raise those types of businesses up um, and make sure that they are getting the attention and the resources that they need so they continue to help um, to help nurture and foster our individual communities. Yeah, I mean, and it's obviously for small business has been quite a bit of challenge over the last number of years and to show that, you know, somebody cares, you know, that those right. insurance company is, is definitely, they, they, I think in marketing, they call it stickiness in the long run. It makes their switching, makes their switching costs a little bit stronger when you have that emotional attachment to a brand. So, I mean, I think like, you know, I obviously anybody jump in with questions like, you know, what are you excited about, you know, obviously besides seeing the children grow up, you know, both personally and professionally over the next, you know, six to 12 months, um, you know, or even longer than that, you know, six, 12 months happens, happens like a blink of an eye. It totally does. But I, I will, I will confess that uh, resolutions for 2022, like resolutions for 2021 last year, I had this like sense of optimism and I am keeping a low bar this year. Mm -hmm. I want to, want to make sure that we're walking into the new year with, um, with reasonable expectations and a philosophy of being able to try and, um, being able to try and be flexible as opposed to overly ambitious to, to what the world we, may bring us because um, in these times, it's just, it's just really hard. It's, it's really hard to, um, to know what's going to happen. And so I, th I think maintaining mental, mental health, mental wellness, um, being kind to myself. One of the things I actually learned about um, over the course of last year, and I don't know if people have, have heard this phrase or not, but uh, really thinking deeply about this idea of toxic positivity. Um, I always pride myself in being a positive person, um, but uh, I started reading about this idea of toxic positivity and the fact that it can be so harmful for people, the people that you surround yourself with, because it, it lacks empathy, which is something that we talked about a little earlier. And so how do you 
go into the next six to 12 months feeling excited about the future and, and planning and, and um, looking forward to future events, but also being empathetic to the people around you and, and not, being, not being a perpetrator of that, that toxic positivity, I think is, is really important. Um, other things that I, I just wanna throw out that I'm really excited about and uh, don't know if it'll be in the future of next, um, but it's something that just personally, I, I think is really interesting is I have been really fascinated with um, the emergence of, uh, of NFTs and how other marketers are using NFTs. I think this is just like a really interesting space. Um, and I, I really love to see it. And then the other thing I've been really excited, and, and this probably will come through in some of our, our next work going forward, is this idea that um, working hard, doing the day-to-day -day grind is this is not the only way to live your life and really thinking about that work-life balance and mental health and how mental health can play into your day-to-day. -day. This trend of like wellness is something that I think is really important. And as a supporter of small businesses, it's something that we feel really strongly about that people, um, small business owners who are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that they are also taking a little bit of time for mental health and for, for, for wellness as well. I think those are also really important trends that, it, that we hope to continue to see and, and drive forward and in the rest of uh, 2022 and probably beyond that. Yeah, no, it's it's learning to be good to ourselves and looking at our children every day and saying, how the heck did you make it through this pandemic? You know, they're, they're, they're the rock stars and we just support them. I mean, you did talk about NFTs, which is probably the new fancy buzzword. And I know Microsoft just got $67 billion on acquiring Activision to somewhat integrate NFTs. So it's probably not a, not a segment that's going to drop down anytime soon, um, you know, more than anything. So, I mean, you did raise a point, like you see some comments, you know, in the, uh, in the chat, you know, talking about challenging fear, the jungle gym. I mean, we've got a lot of content, you know, you've given the community an amazing things and a lot of takeaways, um, you know, just kind of, kind of coming in and, you know, I mean, what, what, did, you know, besides that, what advice would you tell your kids kind of coming into marketing, you know, like, you know, we want to get into marketing. What would, what would you tell them? And, you know, either yes or no, or go be a doctor or a lawyer, you know? Yeah, no, uh, def definitely not. I think that, and now I've, now I have two kids. And so being able to see like kind of differences, even with my nieces and nephews, seeing uh, like little personalities come out is, is really interesting. And so I think, um, one of the things that, that, one of the points that my parents always kind of departed to me was um, being true to yourself. You you work hard. You will find success when you're when you're passionate about something. Um, and so, really thinking about what your passion is, and and also really really appreciating your day to day, I think is the most important thing. Um, this is extraordinarily cliche, but I'm a, a real believer. Um, I, I I love setting goals, but I. I don't live on a day-to-day -day basis for the goals that I hope to achieve. I live on a day-to-day -day basis for the experiences and for the journey. And so for me, that's one of the most important things that I, that I hope to impart to my children is that, um, that magic is in the day-to-day -day moments. It's not in the things that you've accomplished. And I, I hope that that is something um, that we all within the, the marketing space, within, within this industry, we can all start to realize is it's not necessarily just about the achievements, the things that you have on paper. It's about really loving those individual moments and loving the process of getting there. Yeah. I mean, life happens in, in, in between, you know, so it's, uh, it's just, you know, taking, taking pride in that, you know, you talk about passion too. It's, you know, you can look at from, even from a managed perspective, somebody's not passionate, you know, it's, you know, like go do something else. And, you know, mm -hmm. there, there was a famous, famous quote in the play Rent, how time flies when the passion dies. So, you know, it, uh, you, you can, you can see it, you know, even being remote with your staff, I'm sure you can see people that are inspired, um, you know, just kind of leveraging that energy, you know, and just kind of showing that you're passionate behind the brand. And I mean, I think like, you know, we have four more minutes, um, you know, definitely if anybody has any questions, you know, pop them in, you know, any, any kind of, kind of key ultimately takeaways, um, that you want to, you know, given the community, we did cover a, a significant amount of content in a very short amount of time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one, th one thing I, I also do want to do want to articulate is, so this is a women in marketing um, event. And, and, but one of the things that we have found that's extraordinarily important is making sure that we're lifting up all points of view and all perspectives. And so um, DNI becomes really important, but we also 
I really like this shift of, of calling it moving away from diversity and really shifting into inclusion. And it's something we talk a lot about at Next. And it's something we really think about when, when we're talking about these small businesses that, that we like to focus and, and, and spotlight is that we're making sure that we're lifting up voices that may not have um, had a platform in the past. And so how can we continue to help support those, those people and, and also increase diversity within our leadership team and increase diversity within um, the marketing efforts that we do. And so that, that's one thing that I think is, is extraordinarily important. It's something obviously that's come to light um, uh, in a little bit more focus over the, the past few years just within the US and, and the way that we think about that. But I think as marketers, we really have this obligation to be harbingers of, of culture um, and really push, push that forward. And I think that we all have the ability um, to, to be allies. I, th I think it might be a, a good way to close out this session is start with start with how we started it, where we talked about how, how Todd, you yourself are an ally. And I think that that's incredibly important, but we all have the ability to be allies. The idea, the concept of allies is not just not just uh, thinking about um, and supporting different perspectives and different views, but also standing up for what you believe in, standing up and being inclusive and, and going that extra mile. I think that's really critical. And we all, um, all the people who are, who are here, who are um, listening to this talk, we all are in this position, this really unique position to help push that message forward. And so I think that's just something that's, that's really critical is as we think about um, the campaigns that we're building, as we're thinking about the strategy that we're thinking about to drive our businesses forward and, and, and continue to make, uh, make progress, I think really being inclusive and being really nuanced and specific about the people that you are supporting and how that has a downstream effect on other um, the, the rest of the generation. I think that's just really critical and, and an important reminder.